Hello everybody, my name is Gerald Wirsching from the Department of Informatics at the Technical University of Munich. I'm happy to present my joint work together with Matthias Althoff on sampling-based optimal trajectory generation for autonomous vehicles using reachable sets. Let me begin with a brief motivation for our work. Sampling-based motion planners typically, typically rely on a discretization of the search space. Um, multiple approaches for sampling-based planners have been presented in the past, and one famous approach, which we also use as a motion planner for our work, is the sampling-based lattice planner by Werling et al. This planner samples the terminal states of trajectories and intervals around the reference part, and the terminal states are then connected with the initial states using quintic polynomials, which uh, generates a uniform set of trajectories from which an optimal trajectory is chosen uh, according to some cost function. Um, this is also shown in the figure here on the right side. Now, uh, a major drawback of discretization-based planners is that they typically struggle to detect feasible trajectories in time, especially in critical situations with limited solution spaces. Um, and to address this issue, we dynamically we propose a concept to dynamically prune the search space of the sampling-based planner using reachable sets. Before presenting our concept, I would like to briefly introduce some pre preliminaries. We define the reachable set as the set of states that the ego vehicle can reach from the previous reachable set without collision, meaning without interse intersecting with a set of forbidden states. And the set of forbidden states is given by the location of static obstacles and uh, by the prediction of dynamic obstacles. Now, by projecting the reachable sets onto the position domain, we obtain the drivable area meaning all collision-free positions for the ego vehicle. The drivable area can be disconnected, for example, if there are obstacles uh, in the environment, and uh, that's why we also define connected components or multiple connected components within the drivable area, also referred to as connected sets. Finally, a driving corridor is defined as a temporal sequence of connected sets over a certain time interval. Um, in our work, we represent the vehicle motion in a curvilinear coordinate frame, which is aligned with a given reference path, and this reference path can, for example, be determined by a route planner. And in the curvilinear frame, the position and velocities of the vehicle are basically described by the coordinates S and D, which is the path length along the reference path S and the lateral deviation D to the reference path. For the vehicle dynamics, for the reachability analysis, we simplify the vehicle dynamics using a point mass model. And in this point mass model, um, we have a state vector, which consists of the longitudinal and lateral positions and velocities in the curvilinear frame. And we have an input vector, which is uh, made up of the longitudinal and lateral accelerations, also in the curvilinear frame. Um, I'd like to note that this simplified point mass model is only used for the reachable set computation, basically for um, computational efficiency, and for planning kinematically feasible trajectories, a single track model is applied uh, later on. Now I'd like to give you an overview of uh, our concept using the simple example of a vehicle trying to evade a static obstacle. At first, we compute the reachable sets for each time step within the planning horizon. Here in this image, on the top, we show the collision-free drivable areas for each time step. Afterwards, we determine a driving corridor uh, for this planning cycle, which is basically the spatio-temporal combination of the reachable sets to be determined for each time step. After that, we extract sampling intervals from the driving corridor, which is shown in the image below as the blue um, uh, highlighted blue areas within the different uh, sets of the driving corridor. Um, after extracting those uh, sampling intervals, we sample the terminal states of the trajectories within those intervals, which is represented by the black dots here in this, um, uh, in this image below. And uh, finally, we obtain a uh, generated set of trajectories, which we can use for uh, collision and feasibility checking. So for each trajectory, we check whether it collides and whether it's kinematically feasible. And uh, finally, we obtain an optimal trajectory, which is shown in black here, uh, from the set of trajectories uh, using a certain predefined cost function. Now let us go a little more into the details of the reachability analysis itself. In order to compute the reachable sets, we successively carry out the following procedure. We approximate the reachable set at each time step k as the union of base sets. 
And uh, these base sets are basically propagated according to the vehicle dynamics model that we defined earlier. And um, we obtain a propagated reachable set at time step k plus 1. And if we project that propagated reachable set onto the um, position domain, we obtain the propagated drivable areas. Now, these propagated drivable areas may overlap, of course, with the set of forbidden states. So forbidden states may be static obstacles or also the prediction of dynamic obstacles. We uh, finally exclude those sets of forbidden states from our propagated drivable area and we obtain the updated drivable area at k plus 1. And from that, we can also derive the corresponding base sets at time step k plus 1. Now, in order to extract the driving corridors, we store this information of propagation of the reachable sets in a uh, reachability graph. So that's basically spatiotemporal information of the reachability analysis. And in order to uh, obtain a driving corridor, we begin at the last time step and we traverse the reachability graph backwards in time. And with this approach, we obtain a driving corridor for the certain planning horizon that we defined or for this planning cycle. And we also ex uh, automatically exclude sets that, for example, do not have a successor in the reachability graph, which means that uh, we um, automatically exclude sets which would uh, collide in future time steps. Now, after uh, finding a suitable driving corridor for this planning cycle, I'd like to explain our sampling procedure within this uh, driving corridor a little more in detail. So what our planner does is uh, our planner samples longitudinal and lateral trajectories separately. So for the longitudinal trajectories, we sample the longitudinal velocity in the curvilinear frame. And for the lateral trajectories, we sample the lateral deviation from the reference part, d. Um, for the longitudinal velocity sampling interval, the first thing we do is we project the reachable sets onto the longitudinal velocity domain. And the sampling interval is then obtained by um, choosing the upper and lower velocity bounds of the corresponding reachable sets. And uh, we are able to define the sampling interval and uh, sample at first uh, longitudinal trajectories, which we can then use later on. Now for lateral trajectories, we uh, take the set of longitudinal trajectories that we have sampled. And for each longitudinal trajectory, the first thing we do is we determine the endpoint SK at a certain time step of a given longitudinal trajectory. So this is shown here in the image. The blue um, line <coughs> along the s-axis is basically the longitudinal trajectory. Afterwards, we determine the drivable areas which overlap with this endpoint. So in this case, we can see we have three base drivable areas, and two of them are connected. So the ones, two of them on the top are connected, and we consider them basically as a connected set, as I explained earlier, within the drivable area. Um, now, in order to determine which drivable area we want to choose for um, the sampling interval, we uh, choose the connected set which is closest to the reference part, so basically with the least lateral deviation to the reference part. The reason we do that is that our planner aims to minimize deviations from the reference part, and with this approach we basically tell the planner to sample in the drivable areas if we have multiple options which are closest to the reference part. Now, after explaining the idea of our concept, I'd like to show you some of the results from our experiments. We evaluated our concept using scenarios from the Common Road database, which include both static and dynamic obstacles. We compare our approach with a standard approach or a baseline approach, which samples in fixed intervals around the reference path. Uh, in our experiments, uh, dynamic obstacles are predicted using their most likely trajectories, and for all our experiments, we um, plan trajectories for 20 time steps and we replan the trajectories every three time steps. To choose the number of samples that our planner um, uses, we um, choose an approach where we successively increase the number of samples if no feasible trajectory is found. So we begin with a coarse sampling and uh, successively increase the number of samples if, uh, the, if no feasible trajectory can be found until we reach a maxim maximum number of samples which we have predefined. Our first experiment is an evasive maneuver around a static obstacle. The legend for the visualization is shown here on the right, so our ego vehicle, shown in orange, attempts to um, evade the uh, static obstacle, shown in red, which is occupying the current lane of the ego vehicle. Let us first take a look at the animation of both uh, approaches.
So I'd like to stop the video here shortly. Um, at this time step, at time step k equals 6, we can clearly see how the generated trajectories in our approach are focused around the, um, to the narrow passageway around the obstacle. In the standard approach, on the other hand, we use a simple sampling approach, as mentioned earlier, where the samples are just generated in fixed intervals around the reference part shown here in green. I'll finish the video now. And we can see that after moving around the obstacles, both um, planners are able to complete this evasive maneuver. Now, uh, let us compare the computation plan uh, time and the number of samples uh, that both planners require over the planning cycles. So, in the right table, you can see for the first three planning cycles, which are the most critical planning cycles in this scenario, because uh, the ego vehicle has to try to um, find a feasible trajectory around the static obstacle in, in, this, um, in these planning time steps, we can see that the number of samples n which are required to find a feasible trajectory, as well as the number of discarded trajectories, which are um, yeah, infeasible due to collision or kinematic infeasible, are uh, significantly reduced by our approach. And uh, this also leads to a significant reduction of the computation time, especially in those planning cycles. So if you take a look at the, at the left image, we can see that especially in the first few pan planning cycles where both planners have to find a feasible trajectory, uh, which evades the static obstacle, so the most critical time steps, we can see that our approach um, significantly reduces the computation time because it simply requires less samples and has to evaluate less samples due to the fact that we uh, focus the sample trajectories around the um, uh, to the narrow passageway which we determine in our driving corridor with the reachability analysis. So uh, we also increase the criticality of the same scenario by enlarging the obstacle and moving it closer to the ego vehicle. And this mod modification reduces the solution, the solution space even further and makes the scenario even more channel challenging for the sampling-based planner. And uh, what we can see here now in this evaluation for the increased criticality that the um, uh, decrease in computation time and also the reduced number of samples and discarded samples that both planners require is significantly uh, more uh, um, noticeable than in the previous uh, example. So this shows us that the um, benefits of our approach become particularly noticeable in situations where the solution space is very small, so especially in safety critical situations. Now, in order to evaluate our approach in the presence of dynamic obstacles, we consider this merging maneuver on a highway. In this scenario, the ego vehicle attempts to perform a lane change and merge into a tight gap between two vehicles. Um, this maneuver is especially challenging as the planner has to detect the narrow gap at first and also determine a feasible velocity in order to not collide with the preceding vehicle. Let's take a look at both animations of both planners. And we can see how, especially in this time step now, the uh, right uh, image or the right video, which shows our approach, um, shows that the generated trajectories are again pretty much constrained to the narrow um, driving corridor in, these, in, 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 the, um, in this merging maneuver. Now, in order to evaluate the computation time, we again take a look at the critical time step here at k equals 12 of the merging maneuver, where the planners have to find a feasible trajectory uh, which merges into the tight gap. Again, we notice that especially at time step k equals 12, in the left image we can see how the computation time is significantly reduced, and in the right image, which is a snapshot of both videos or both animations at this time step, we can see how um, our proposed concept, as mentioned before, uh, constrains the generated or the sample trajectories to this narrow driving corridor, especially um, uh, in this critical time step k equals 12, which leads to a significantly improved detection of the narrow merging gap. Finally, let me conclude our work. We propose a concept for a sampling-based motion planner using reachable sets. Our approach first computes collision-free driving corridors via reachability analysis and then adapts the sampling intervals for our motion planner to the dynamically changing environment. We evaluated our approach in numerical experiments with scenarios involving both static and dynamic obstacles. Our concept significantly reduces computation time and increases the sampling efficiency compared to the baseline approach. We further showed how the benefits of our concept are most noticeable in critical situations with small solution spaces, which are typically challenging for sampling-based planners to handle. 
This is the end of my presentation. Thank you everybody for your attention.